So, Dean, now we've talked about some best practices of the task section, and now I'd like to go over and, and talk about some things in email. So now we're in the email section, and you can see that there's a GTD add-in toolbar. There's a GTD drop-down window, delegate, defer, action, someday, snooze, file, and delete, and project central. If you were if you were in the other sections, this section is grayed out. So if you were in the calendar section and the task section, it's going to be grayed out. You only use these uh, bars when you're in email. So what I'd like to do is show a couple of features that the add-in can do when you are processing emails. So Dean, can you walk through how you use the delegate and defer an action button? Sure, so let's start with an email from Shirley Will Lant, who sent us some flight information for this project we're doing for Freight Knot. In this case, she sent an email to Shelby saying, here's some information about a bunch of participants and please have them picked up at the airport. That's not something that Shelby would do, so she's going to delegate it to somebody else. In the email, you can see the same buttons you saw in the Explorer window. In this case, I'm going to delegate this to somebody else by hitting the Delegate button. The Delegate dialog box pops up, and I can delegate this to anybody I want to. I can go to my standard Outlook address list and pick somebody. I can go to my contacts, whatever I like. In this case, I'm going to pick Coordinator, who is a coordinator for everything that we do. By default, the action is create a waiting for item, which follows the methodology exactly. If I want, I can choose a project to be associated with it and a subproject if I'd like. The add-in automatically makes the task subject, which is going to be the waiting for our next action, begin with the person's name, which will be coordinator. And it will have the date that I delegated it to them, and it will have the subject of the email that was involved. There are lots of other options you can explore and delegate, but those are the basics, and I think the ones we discussed are pretty much the ones that most folks use. I'll hit OK, and you'll notice that it creates an email to the person to whom I'm delegating. I'll say, Coordinator, could you please take care of this? Please handle this. I'm going to send that off to Gordon, and there we go. So off it goes, and when it does, the add-in creates a waiting for task for you and pops it up. You can see in the action list that it's automatically created a waiting for. It's filled in the project automatically, and it's given me the subject that we discussed before. And the contents of the email are in the task. Pretty neat. I can go back to my inbox and see that the email is out of the inbox. It's out of the inbox, out of my head, and in my trusted system. And if I go down to the task list and look for the Freight Not Project, I would see the task that I just created. Can you open that up? Because one of the things I see that my clients miss is that they see the text of the email, but to access the email itself, you need to click on Open Mail. That's right. Whenever you create a next action task or a deferred calendar item with the add-in and there's an associated email, you can click on the Open Email button to open the original email that you processed. This provides you with a very handy way to quickly get the email back from your trusted system. Fabulous. And then while we're at this um, waiting for, can you open up, go back into email, and can you just explain the inbox, if you open up the inbox and you have that folders? Sure. The question Meg and the rest of us get asked a lot is what happens to the emails once you've processed them? People are always worried that they're going to lose those emails. If you expand the folders under the inbox, you'll see an action, deferred, waiting for, and someday folder in there. That's where the emails go when you process them. So in this case, the coordinator email was a waiting for. If I go to the waiting for folder, there's the email right there that was processed. So you never have to worry about losing your emails. I will say that unless you're looking for an email or deleted something by accident, you probably rarely need to use these folders. In fact, you shouldn't drag stuff in there. You should use the Outlook add-in to take care of that. Your emails will always be there. You'll never lose them. In fact, when we clicked on the open email before, that's where the add-in looked for the email that we processed. Exactly. So that when you're in your waiting for list and you decide to delete that waiting for, it will get taken out of this waiting for folder, correct? Correct. So if I go to the task list, I can see that the coordinator next action is there. Let me open it. If I hit the delete button on the GTD Outlook add-in buttons, it will ask me if I want to delete the email associated with it. If I say yes, the task is gone. If I go back to the at waiting for folder, you can see that it's gone from there as well. 
So what's really important, folks, and I guess this gets missed, is that if you take an email and if you hit that delegate button again, you see at the bottom, folks, that there's a reference, save for reference. If you check that box off, then you can actually save it. You either can create a new folder or put it into an existing folder if you need to keep that email for permanent reference. That's right. So processing it just like before, we can see that it's created a waiting for task. And in addition to the waiting for task, and the email the add-in stores in the waiting for folder. We told the add-in we wanted to file a reference copy in the projects folder. So if I go to the projects folder, I can see that the wireless access email is right there. Great. So the other thing I just want to be able to point out is that we do teach at the David Allen Company that sometimes you can create an inaction folder. And if an email is going to take more than two minutes to uh, complete, you can drag the email over to the action at action folder. That's not what NetCentrix is recommending here, and that really is misunderstood. So hopefully that's cleared it up. Great. Now let's do an example of deferring an email. In fact, let's do this without opening the email at all. If you're someone who likes to use a reading pane, you can process your emails right in the inbox using the GTD add-in buttons up top. In this case, Huge Rays is telling Shelby that she has to conduct her performance reviews by the end of the month. Following the methodology then, this is something that Shelby would want to defer. To do this, I'll click the defer button. And this is part of the performance reviews project. You aren't required to pick a project, but I find it quite useful to do so because then when I'm in Project Central, I can pull all of my emails, deferred items, and actions associated with the project all together in one place. I need to do this by the end of the month, and I'm thinking tomorrow would be a good time, so I'll choose that day. It just has to happen sometime tomorrow, so I'll click the All Day event to indicate that on my calendar. I'll hit OK, and the add-in will create a calendar item. You can see that the subject is Performance Review, and it's an All Day event. The email text is in the body, and again, if I want to, I can open up the email directly from the calendar item. So it works the same way we discussed previously. If I go to my calendar and I look on Friday, there it is right at the top saying I have to do it sometime today. I could have picked a particular time and it would show up down here, but I chose to do it sometime that day. If you're wondering where the email went, if I look in the deferred folder, it's sitting right there. See the performance reviews do. So just as with Delegate, it's out of your inbox and in your trusted system. Perfect. So then it's also going to be the same for you to choose the action button. Do you want to show that? Right, so let's say I'm looking at my email and I see that my friend Reads A Lot has sent me an email about a great business book. I'd like to choose the next action of at computer so I can go and look it up on the web. Maybe I'll go to Amazon and check it out. When I create it, the add-in creates a next action task with the action of at computer. Again, if I want to, I can open up the original email right from the task. Now, the email has gone out of my inbox and if I go to my task list, I can see it handy dandy right there. If I open the task, I can access the email and do all the things we talked about before. Fabulous. The other thing that I get a lot from my clients is how do you add a new email into an existing task? Right. So, for example, Shelby asked for a bunch of websites that people recommend we review before the Freight Night Conference. There's one from Hugo First and Will He Make It and Betty Won't. And I want to add Hugo's to an existing task. It just so happens that somebody else already emailed me and I created a next action task. So I'll open this email and click the Related Task button. The add-in will go and find any task that has the same subject as the email we're processing. In this case, I have an existing task, so I'll just relate the task to that one. And what the add-in does is open up the original task and puts the new email in as an attachment. So that's an easy way to add an email to an existing next action task. Can you, what if it, it, does, what if it isn't the same subject line, how do you do it? Well, let's take the rock climbing course. That would be a good one. I could do related tasks and it won't find any. I can then search all my active ah, tasks perfect. and pick a particular one that I want to perfect. assign it to. Perfect. Perfect. Now, the next logical question you might ask, my very favorite feature that you haven't hit on yet, Meg, is what happens if I want to initiate an email? I haven't received one that I need to process, but instead maybe I got a phone call or some snail mail and I want to email somebody about it and process the outgoing email the same way I process an incoming email. How do I do that? You tell me because you love this feature. Well, since you asked so nicely. <laughs> so I can create a new email by clicking or using a shortcut key. Suppose I want to send an email to Gordonator and I want to say, please get hovercraft parts. 
In this case, what I'd like to do is tell myself that I assign this to Gordon and create a waiting for task. Under my send options, I have the magic send end box, which is my favorite thing about the add-in. In this case, I will say send and delegate, and then I'll type my message to Gordon. Go do this. I have to ask please because we're nice here. <laughs> and I send it, and it will automatically create a waiting for next action just like we did before. I can show the task, I can file my email for reference, everything that we did before. The add-in creates a task with the original email text that I sent. I can get that original email, everything that we did before except that now I'm initiating instead of just processing an email that came in. I can now go to my task list and do all the same things that we did before as well. You can send and delegate, you can send and defer, all those sorts yeah, of things. Yeah, no, it's just fabulous what this allows people to do. So great. So those are some best practices and, and the things that I really like to touch upon with my clients to really understand how you can use email with the Getting Things Done methodology with the Getting Things Done Outlook add-in. <laughs>